What is good, y'all? SGG Game Man. It's your boy Smooth Got Game, aka GM Smooth. Back with another Reds Rebuild video, baby. And I hope you guys are ready because it is time for what can we call this? Red Tober? Synthober? I don't know. October for the Cincinnati Reds, though, as we're going to get ready to take on the San Diego Padres. You see, game one will be set off. Joe Musgrove, their starting ace, who had a very fantastic season. We'll see his stats a little bit later, as well as Luis Severino. Pretty up and down year for him, but we're still in a rock with him as our ace, one of the highest overalls as far as our starting pitchers go and performed the best when he's at the top and when he's at his peak. Just had a couple of rough starts that kind of blew the ERA out of proportion, which is why it's above the four ERA. <clears throat> but here for the solid video for today, we will be getting through games one and two of the series to set up a possible elimination game or set up for games three and four. So basically with the elimination game should be in the next episode, unless of course we go to a game five, in which case that would be its own separate video. Now, I did want to do a slight tweak to my pitching rotation. After thinking about it some more, I just felt like it might be a little bit better to change up my rotation and make it Luis Severino, Hunter Green, Eliza Hernandez, Tyler Mahaley, and Nick Waddell. Drop Tyler Mahaley down three spots. I mean, he's still a great pitcher, but that four ERA was too high. Hunter Green and Eliza Hernandez balled out this season. I think they earned it. So I'm moving them up to the two and three spots. Uh, hopefully that kind of works out for us and we don't see it fall short. But Tyler Mahaley will still be that fourth you know, pitcher. So he's still going to pitch, still going to do things. And Nick Adato might earn himself in. But we head down to the Cincinnati Red Stadium here as it is I don't want to say opening day, but it feels like opening day. As we're getting the Star Spangled Banner out of the way, fireworks are erupting, and it is officially playoff time as the NLDS game number one is set to kick off. Two strong teams, the San Diego Padres winning the NL West, Cincinnati Reds. We took care of the NL Central, so no slouches at all. The West is a tough division to get out of, so the fact that they won that one means they are going to be tough competition for us here today, but I think we're ready for it. All season, we played pretty strong, had a little bit of a slump coming into the postseason. Maybe it's what you need. Sometimes if you go into the postseason too hot, everybody starts to get you on that feeling of, oh, they're bound to lose eventually, and then you lose and it's real sad so maybe the cold streak right before the postseason is what we need so that way we can just warm back up get right back hot as we look to go ahead and get things moving forward to try to get past the san diego Padres team and get closer to our goals of winning a world series with the cincinnati reds both pitchers warming things up as they get ready for tip off here I said tip off. <laughs> as we get ready for first pitch here, man. Luis Severino, 32 starts this season, 9 and 8 record, 405 ERA, whip below 1.4. Had a lot of strikeouts, almost hit 200 this season in only 191 innings. So very strong year. Just a lot of runs came in. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes those also two come as far as the losses go with errors. But we'll get this game kicked off. C.J. Abrams will come up to bat for the Padres. Pretty average season for him throughout the regular season. Not typically what you might want to see from a leadoff hitter is the first pitch is a slider taken for strike one. The 0-1 pitch will try to be bunted as we see back-to-back -back sliders to go in and get him down 0-2 quickly. And then the call slider on the back door. Easy strikeout number one. Now, Luis Severino has good strikeout stuff and good command of his stuff. And when it's on, he's on. That's a drop third strikeout. Steven throws over to first base for Aguilar. And that'll get out number two. Fernando Tatis Jr. looking at a potential strikeout situation himself as that four seamer gets called on the edge and he'll have to go sit down as that's three up, three down via the strikeout. And we'll be tasked with facing this man, Joe Musgroff. 32 saves, 12 and nine record, 4 11 year race. So not too good for him as well. Uh, strikeouts was way lower, hits are way up, but the whip is down because his walks are down. So not a man that loses control that often, but is probably a pitch to contact guy. And against our batting order, that might not be too good. Jonathan India up first to face him as he pops that first pitch away. 15 home runs this season is great from a leadoff batter. I expect him to only get probably about 10, if that, as he strikes out through that slider trying to check his swing. Next up, we have Cesar Hernandez with a 2 out count, being very patient as he normally is as a number two hitter, kind of setting things up for Rafael Devers, the snubbed MVP candidate. Should have at least been on that list, but, but hey, it is what it is. As we take that 3-0 pitch, green light given, going back his third baseman, he will dive and miss it. I don't even know if he was close on that one, but he made it close enough to be scary. As that four-seamer will be taken up the middle, going to the outfield. Are you kidding me? 
Great dive from the center fielder, ranging all the way to his right and just letting loose. We see the stat cast here. We barely show this, but it's postseason baseball. We got to is look at that straight line speed. 99.9% .9 route efficiency. If he was any less than that, if he's probably like 99.8, that's probably a base hit going right past him for a possible double or triple. So perfect play for him when they needed it the most. And that will bring up Rafael Devers with nobody on base, but he's still dangerous. Why? Because he can still hit long balls. 33 home runs this season, 104 RBIs. And with a 3-1 count, you got Joey Gallo right behind him. And they'll like to walk him, as most people do. Because now you've got the man that struck out the most in the entire NL coming up. You put him into a 1-2 count after he fouls off that curveball. Joe Musgrove will be looking. Devers not getting any extra lead off at first base as he swung terribly early at that curveball. And now retires the side. Now, we will skip ahead and forward a little bit here to the bottom of the third. Tyler Stevenson coming up. And we've still yet to this point seen a hit from either side, actually. So, one, two, threes all the way through. But we go to the bottom of the third here. Where that ball will just be tipped off foul. 1-1 one, one count. Looking to maybe get the first hit of the ball game. That is a long fly ball. If it's fair, it's gone. Nah, just barely tweaked foul. I think it was six feet outside of the foul pole. And just like uh, Madden, if you don't get a pick, you get scored on. And MLB to show, if you don't hit that home run, you strike out. So that'll be the first out of the inning. Jonathan India coming up, though, as we look to get the top of the order going. Maybe for the middle of the order to try to make something happen here. As 3-2 count. He watches that slider. He will walk over to first base yet again. Still no hits for us, but plenty of walks. As this 2-2 pitch gets lined into the outfield as a base hit. First one of the game. As you can see up there, we've left two people on base up to this point. That is a first hit of the game. And we're looking to try to score them. And Rafael Devers, who better for the job than him? As he takes his curveball deep into the outfield, it will get down and bounce up against the wall. One runner is going to come around. The second runner, Cesar Hernandez, is going to come around too as well. Throw to the plate. Not in time. Two RBI double from at least our team's MVP. Might not have got all the votes, and we're going to talk about it till the cows come home. Snub, snub, snub. Give that man his award and give us our two-run lead. And that'll also set up to Joey Gallo to come up. Runner in scoring position, 1-1 one, one count. Now you don't really want to pitch to him. I mean, he can still be dangerous, although he is a strikeout, man. That's what happens when he gets a hold of one finally. Cutter sent way out of here as that is a home run for the Big Red Machine. First home run of the NLDS. If you want to count it with the regular season, 34 for him as he hit 33 of them things. 113, 112 RBIs on the season. We can tack on another one and two more RBIs as well as we can tack on two more to this lead. Four to nothing, Cincinnati. Just overwhelmingly beautiful swing there. A cutter on the outside part of the plate. Not even a really good pitch to drive. He not only drove it, but pulled it all the way deep out there into right field. And next up, we got Jesus Aguilar, who will come up trying to extend this inning maybe a little bit further. And he's got a full count as well. 3-2, swings and misses at the slider just a little bit over the top. And next up, we got Doug Granger saying full count. He will take this four-seamer opposite field. That one's ranging back at the warning track. Glove just before the wall. Just died before it can reach out there and get another home run going. So, unfortunately, we'll have to settle with a 4 nothing lead here as we have had a lot of walks come in. That's resulted in his pitch count being high. Now, Luis Severino still not giving up a hit yet as we go here to the top of the fourth. Grounder to Jonathan Indy over the first. Just barely got him. Got to watch out for that speed from the leadoff hitter. He's almost beat out a couple here at this point. 2-2. Two -two. This one will be chopped over to Hernandez. He'll glove this one. Easily throw over as well. And that one just nearly as close. Y'all better throw that ball a little bit quicker. Fernando Tatis, who can single-handedly change the game with one swing, too, as well. We'll see a 1-2 count. And he will take this liner right over to Hernandez thanks to the shift. And while we still have it, we're going to use it. As we go to get that final out, we'll take it to the top of the fifth. Still getting more outs. Luis Severino is looking strong here as he gets Granger to glove that one for the first out. Luke Voigt. Will come up now, and the first pitch that he sees, he'll watch that cutter low. 21 home runs this past season. Not a bad job from your number five hitter. Our five hitter was just slightly better, though. As we get this, swings and misses at the slider. That will be a strikeout to go ahead and move him forward. And we've got two outs. Namar Mazzara 
is up next and he swings and misses at the upstairs four seamer we still have this no hitter going no hitter watch officially is on we're five innings deep a lot of people make it four innings three innings so we're not gonna put it on there five innings though uh, we got watchers on especially in the postseason we're the only game probably playing right now unless philly's playing too and that ball would be taken a long way i didn't know that was gonna be a homer but Dever said, Joey Gallo cannot outdo me. I need one for myself as he takes a line shot out in the right field. And he is not playing any games. That is gone. And what is that? Five nothing lead now for the Reds. Luis Severino is comfy as the ace right now with this kind of lead. As Joey Gallo will look to keep this inning going even further. 3-1. Watches that knuckle curve go in, seeing if... They go ahead and decide to walk him. He'll have a full count. Chance to kind of make something happen. That's a knuckle curve. He will chop this one into the outfield and beat the shift. Hit it to the opposite side this time. Didn't try to pull it and just chopped it past the shortstop playing over top of second base. And the inning will continue. Is that is Aguilar up to second base. He'll glove it and throw it right over to first base. The scoop and pick. And he's got him. We're back to Luis Severino, though. No hitter watch is on. Five innings. Only 49 pitches, too. So he's been very efficient here today. And James Woods is up, facing 7-8-9 here, trying to get things moving. Now, he has a 2-0. Technically, he has the perfect game watch on. Still hasn't allowed a batter of any type. But we do have a 3-0 count here. This is getting very, very dangerous as he watches that four seamer right down the middle of the plate. Right down Main Street. Let's it go. Watches that four seamer get called on the inside. Black, we've got a full count here. He's battled all the way back. Swing, and he pops this one up. Gallo's ranging in. Does he have the speed to get there? He will not. Oh, unfortunately, he will not get there. And there goes the perfect game slash no hitter. But shutout is still on watch here as we get over to India. Over to Hernandez for one, to Aguilar for two. Quick double play to make easy work of that first base runner they got. And Andrew Stevenson is up next. Takes the first pitch he sees down the line. And that'll be a base hit as Granger's ranging in and doesn't play it too good. That'll range up against the back wall. And he's already got speed. Now he only gets into second base with that 86 speed. Thankfully, it wasn't a triple, but we'll have a chance here to go in and make things work. This won't be flied out deep. Jay Allen is going to go underneath it and glove it, as that'll take care of things here. In the sixth, we go to the bottom half, trying to get some more insurance runners. Move stock is. Is he going to try to get into the fun here today? He's got a 3 1 count. Green light is on. He takes that four seamer, pulled it into the outfield, and somehow still beats the shift as that one hits up against the wall. And they will take that with a one-out double. That's why you don't always put the green light on. You see they got James Paxton in now. They went and moved away from their reliever earlier in this game. And he's been coming in trying to settle things down ever since then. But he's already given up one run. And he might be able to give up a second one here. As that will put runners at the corners. Bottom of the six. Tyler Stevenson is up. The man that hit over 300 all season. over two so far in this game. But will take that pitch and drop it right in front of the outfielder for an RBI base hit. Six-nothing ball game. Jonathan India, 1-0 count. He will take the four-seamer he sees basically right down the middle and bloop that one into the outfield. Jay Allen's going to use that speed to come all the way around, and he will slide in safe. It is seven to nothing. The lead is just ballooning ever so slightly by the day, and they're going to bring in Ryan Withers. Seven games on the regular season, only three holes, six and two-thirds innings, so maybe a September call-up that they decided did good enough or impressed enough to keep on the major league roster. For playoff time. So he'll be the man tasked to slowing his offense down. It's already put up seven runs. He'll inherit two guys on it. First and second. One out. And the first man he'll have to face is Cesar Hernandez. Switching sides this time. To the right side of the plate. And it didn't even matter. Slider. He will take this into the outfielder. will get over the outfielder's head up against the wall. One runner is going to come in. They're going to hold the second one at third. So this time it will be an RBI double. For Cesar Hernandez. Rafael Devers is going to take this pitch and fly it out. And they're going to move the runners up this time. Throw is going to come in straight to the plate, not in time, and not on the line. As now it's a 9-0 game, allowing both those inherited runners that he had to come in. Ryan is not doing a too good of a job. He only did that on four pitches. His fifth pitch is a deep ball to center field that will be gloved just in front of the warning track, it looks like, to finally put an end to this inning. And we got to go back to our pitcher, man. 59 pitches through six innings. Make that 60 through six in the third as that ground ball will get him for the first out there. He's been pitching masterfully today. Pitch count is extremely low. Fernando Tatis Jr. 0 for 2 today. And he makes him fly out yet again, keeping their best power hitter 0 for 3. And Manny will try to right behind him. He's 0 for 2 as well. First pitch that he sees. He takes this one out to Gallo. That's a deep fly ball going back. And will be gloved before the warning track. 
Seven shutout innings. We let's take it to the eight. Let's try to get eight shutout innings. As in the one-one count, Luke Voigt will pop this one up to Jay Allen. Glove it easily in mid center field. Throw will come in. Namar Mazzara, 0 for 2. That's the story of the whole team, basically. Almost everybody's 0 for 2 at this point. Joey Gallo will go back, range back, glove this one in. And the point is to, you know, 74 pitches in. He's not really throwing that much. Do we bring in any kind of reliever in this game? I don't really want to. Now, his stamina was getting low at this point, but I didn't want to bring anybody in. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we hit to the ninth. Let's go back and focus on these batters in the bottom of the eighth and see if we can put some runs together here. As this bloops right in front of the center fielder for a two-out rally to possibly get started. As they, uh, Jonathan India is over at first base. Cesar Hernandez. He'll take his 2-1 four-seamer or two-seamer and take that to the outside part of the field. And that'll be a home run. This man has been an RBI machine today. Give him another one. He had the RBI double earlier. He has a two-run home run here today. And this is exactly why Cesar Hernandez is my two-hitter. When India gets on. Hernandez either moves him around or scores him himself. And that's why you make the lineup like this. People were saying, you know, why have Todd Stevenson bat over 300 at the nine spot? Because it sets him up to get India up, to set Hernandez up, to set Devers up. It's about starting with nine to set up four, to set up three and five. That's why y'all got to be smarter when y'all set up your lineups. Now, unfortunately, there we had to stop after 11 as Rafael Devers did strike out. But on the top of the ninth, you can see energy is low for him. But my dude's throwing 75 pitches. You never know when a game is going to get bad. You're going to need to put in you know, your whole bullpen. You have to go to the long reliever to get a, a basically starter type innings. And I do not want to waste their energy if it's not needed. Of course, you know, I could put them in right now and let them get some word. Blah, blah, blah. No. Postseason time, this is my ace, if anything. And we got a shutout on the table. He is throwing, especially with 11 0 lead, I would have probably let this man pitch until he went through the whole order like all nine of the hitters got hits <laughs> or walks. Like, he was pitching until he finished his game. I don't even care. Unless he gave up 10 runs, then we would bring in the closer, Lucas Sanders. But until then, he's pitching. Now, C.J. Abrams will be their last hope here as he watches that first pitch go down. 0-1 count there. Swings and misses at that one. It will go up to India. He will glove it, throw over to first base just barely in time, and we will take game number one here in Cincinnati. We're up 1-0 on the San Diego Padres already. And that shows you we were ready for postseason baseball. I told you this team is great. This team is good. We've made the acquisitions to be great through free agency. We've had rookies come up with me big, Jay Allen. And matter of fact, we're about to go see the other big rookie, quote unquote, new rookie of the year, following up with Doug Ranger, pitching in tomorrow's game. Nine innings, seven strikeouts for Luis Severino. Cesar Hernandez, three for five, a double, a home run, three RBIs. You can see the game's MVPs, the winners. Joe Mosgrove got credited with the L. But how do we bounce back from an 11-0 victory in probably the most randomest way possible? I can't wait for y'all to see game number two. If you guys are ready for it, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe if you are brand new and enjoying the episode. Now, you know, box score, look, you see a lot, especially the top of the order, top four guys, all double hit games. A couple of offers, unfortunately, for Aguilar and Granger. But everybody was joining in the hitting part of the day. 12 hits today. Was looking amazing. Hernandez, Devers, and Gallo getting started off early with those home runs. But let's go ahead and jump straight into game number two. Back here in Cincinnati, this time we have a night game. Last time was probably, I'd say, about mid-afternoon. You know, probably 2, 3 o'clock first pitch. This one, about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock first pitch. We are at night with this one. Cincinnati Reds, San Diego Padres. Game number two. As we look to go and extend that lead to nothing. Let's get into it, man. Hunter Green, rookie of the year. 32 starts, 13 and 10 record, 379 ERA, and 180 in a third innings pitch. Only gave up 150 hits, 79 walks, 183 strikeouts, and that whip is 1.27. You see why he earned the number two spot in the rotation for this postseason. If he does good, might see a number two spot moving forward in the future permanently. 
But we'll have to see how he does. Now he'll go off against CJ Abrams again. You're going to see a lot of zeros come up from their batter order. Only two hits yesterday in yesterday's game. And how do we go ahead and match that up with this season? Let's see. As the rookie goes in and pitches for his first ever postseason game and gets him to a 2-2 count as this one grounds over to India. He'll go ahead and throw over to first base for the out. First out of the ball game as Hunter Green looks to be good here. 0-1 count. Brandon Nimmo will chop this one right to the catcher, Stevenson. Glove this one. Throw it over to Aguilar. Nice and easy work here. Now, pitch count is much higher. We're going to be watching that to this game to see how the rookie does. But so far, 12 pitches through that first inning. So he's doing what he needs to do to get out of that inning. And we'll be tasked with going up against this man, Snell. Unfortunately, I don't know why his stats didn't pop up. Uh, this is just kind of like y'all seeing the exact same thing that I saw. Stats just never popped up on the screen. So I'm not even sure what kind of year he had. I'm sure it was pretty decent. As he'll be the man tasked with slowing down the offense that dropped 11 on their ace yesterday. Now, maybe he'll just come out and show that maybe he's a better pitcher than him. And they went to go with their better pitcher in game two, which is a unique strategy, but one that could also work. As Jonathan India will take the second pitch that he sees, a four-seamer up in the zone that will be gloved in shallow center field by the center fielder. So we'll move on to Jay Allen pitching or hitting in the second spot of this lineup. Now, as we move the order a little bit, when we're facing lefties versus righties, just having to deal with who, what their power ratings and contact ratings are, I do look at the ratings. Not so much of the averages that they have as that liner goes right to shortstop at second base for the final out of that inning. Uh, but I do look at their ratings. So Jay Allen is better contact wise versus lefties as far as uh, Cesar Hernandez, who he's replacing. He has more power. So we put him at the five spot and Aguilar has way less power. So we dropped him down to the eight spot where Jay Allen would be. Only changes in the lineup that you guys will see. But back to Hunter Green as he gets two quick strikeouts. And this man was a strikeout machine this year, just like Luis Severino. But we saw several starts where he would get 10 plus strikeouts. So we know he's got the stuff as he gets three up, three down via the strikeout in that second inning to keep everything moving forward. Now we go bottom of the second. Joey Gallo will be up 2-2 count and get froze on that four seamer at the knees. Unable to get the bat off his shoulders. Then I'll be out number one. And then Hernandez unable to get good wood on it. He pops this one out to shallow right field. For the second out of the inning. And that'll lead us all the way over to Doug Granger. Former rookie of the year. Passing the torch to his teammate pitcher. But swings and misses through that slider. And that'll end the second inning. Still going to the bottom of third. One out looking for the first of the ball game. For either side. As it looks like Jesus Aguilar. With a full count. Could he each be the first base runner of the game. As we haven't even seen any walks to this point. And he will be. Watches that four-seamer low. He'll walk his way over to first base. That'll bring up Tyler Stevenson with a chance to move the runner over or possibly score him here. And the first ball he sees is a four-seamer basically down the middle, out the center field, and will be gloved, though, about midway through. So not even much room to elevate there. But Jonathan India will come in. 2-0 count. Swing and hit that four-seamer a long way in the outfield. It will be gloved. Still three innings, no hits. No base runners for at least the Padres side. We're going to the fifth. Still at that point of no hits, no base runners. Not even a walk. As Manny Muchado will ground this one over to Hernandez. Throw over to first base. And he's got him. Now number one, Luke Voigt will come up. Trying to be the first hit of the game for the Padres. And he will take this pitch right over past Hernandez as they try to use the shift there. Using it more to the other side. We don't see it too often with the righties. But using the shift on the righty there. Hernandez moving away from his second base spot. I don't know if he would have got it even if he's in his actual spot. But that'll be the first base runner of the game for the Padres. All coming way of the hit. The first hit of the game for either side. And Amar Mazzara. Full count here. One out. Void over at first base. And he will swing and miss through that upper heat. You know Hunter Green is touching 98, 99, and 100. So that four seamer will be coming at all speeds, here is that is another 98 mile power four seamer that gets by him. Is that'll end the inning? Two back to back strikeouts going through the fifth. Still, that is the first hit of the game for either side. No hits for the Reds. Let's go to the bottom of fifth. Still searching for their first one against Blake. And unfortunately, he freezes Hernandez there on the four seamer. Not able to do anything with it. Doug Granger, as they pop up how many home runs he had all the way to this point in the career. And then he gets a base hit off the curveball inside outing it to the outfield. And there's our first base hit coming in almost the exact same situation. Both of them in the fifth inning with one out and little choppers that barely made it to the outfield past the infielders. Now you got Mike Mustakas who will ground it over to second base to short for one, picked out of the dirt at first base for the other, and that's two outs. So we take things to the bottom of the sixth, still one out, 
Still no runs across yet for either side. Great shutouts going here on both sides. That ball will go ahead and fly to the outfield and bloop down for a base hit. Another one out hit the next inning following. So a chance for Jonathan Indy in the top of this lineup to do something. As that ball will be lined into the outfield and will be gloved just over the tight, high stretched hand of the outfielder. Look like he did a little skip to my loot there too to pick that one up out the air. As Jay Allen, 0-1 count will look to make something happen here with two outs and maybe a pitch you probably could have let go because you're not doing much with that one unless you got that Rafael Devers, Joey Gallo power. So that one will be gloved too as well. And we'll still go 0-0, top of the seventh pitch count. Like I said, becoming an issue. We're up to 90 pitches as we get that strike out there to get the first out. His eighth of the game. We're starting to look and see how far can Hunter Green take us in this ballgame. 0-0. Zero, zero. What do I want to do as he goes and gets that change up looking? Gets Fernando Satis Jr. to strike out. Do you put in a middle reliever? Your setup man, do you put in your long reliever because you don't know when you'll score a run? <clears throat> in my mind, I'm not wanting to do the long reliever. Just like I said earlier, if a game falls apart early and we give up four or five earned runs in like the first two, three innings, I need my long reliever to go starter minutes. So here I'm looking at our whole bullpen after we get that last out in the bottom and go to the bottom of the seventh. I'm looking who can possibly I trust with a close zero to zero game. And as far as middle relievers go, I don't want to go to my setup men just yet because they're for clutch situations. I'm thinking Seth Lugo will be the guy that I go with here. He's been the most consistent and productive out of our middle relievers. So we're going to go ahead and warm him up and get him ready just in case. We're not scheduled to put him in. We're just getting him ready just in case, you know. Hopefully we score a run. If we scored a run, I would definitely put him in. As that's a base hit that gets down into the outfield. Moustakas looking like he might have wanted to go for second base and hightailed it back when he realized he didn't have the speed. But just in case we were able to get a run, we probably would go Seth Lugo automatically just because of the pitch count. Now they're going to go with Mike Mayer, another guy who hasn't played that much this season, 23 games, 5-2-9 year right. That's more so either a September call-up or somebody that got injured. For a big portion of the season, uh, just slightly more games than the last review we saw last time with Weathers. So we'll see if he's able to come in and stop the bleeding a little bit better. As that's a base hit that'll get into the outfield past the outstretched first baseman. And now we got runs at first and second with one out. And Myers might be looking like he's cracking like the bullpen did yesterday. And Doug Granger got a great chance to bring home the go-ahead run. That's a line drive into the outfield, and it will be gloved by the center fielder. Just hit hard enough. Unlucky there. As that four seam was right down the middle. Just hit to the wrong part of the park. You got Mike Moustakis. One, two count. Runners at first and second with two outs. And he'll take that four seamer a long ways into the outfield. Just able to go ahead and glove that though before the warning track. And we've got seven innings of shutout ball for both the Reds and the Padres. A major difference from the game that we saw last game as it was an 11 to nothing dumpster whopping between the Reds and the Bats have just gone cold today. And you see Hunter Green is so tired now. He's got triple pitches here. 101. He's only hitting 97 on that four-seamer now, and his energy bar actually has the exclamation point on it. He has no energy at this point, but I'm like, we're riding until the wheels fall off at this point. Like, at least give me one more inning, and then I'll for sure take you out for the ninth no matter what happens. Whether we get a run or not, I'll take you out in the ninth inning. So, full count here. Austin Lowe is in the on-deck circle. We just need one more strike here on James Woods, and it will get called on the 97-mile-per-hour heat on the inside black. James Woods been getting unlucky calls both the first two games, I feel like. And they bring in Archie Bradley, 56 games a season, so a more seasoned reliever, 393 ERA with a 1.3 whip, and he'll be up against Jesus Aguilar. Now, we go to our bullpen. I'm going to go ahead and sit down uh, Seth Lugo, and I'm going to go ahead and get Jordan Hicks up and ready to go. He will be the guy that I bring in to kind of maybe get one or two innings uh, should this go into extras, and hopefully we can walk this off in the bottom of the 10th is what I'm thinking in my mind. As Jesus Aguilar hits the first pitch that he sees right down the middle, now will be gone! Solo home run by Jesus Aguilar. Up to this point, I don't think he had a hit yet. He had a couple of walks. He's lower in the order because of the lefties. They bring in a couple righties, so the power to him comes back, at least as far as ratings go. And he has just hit the go-ahead run here in the playoffs for game number two. That is why your lineup needs to be filled with power hitters at all spots. The eight hitter just hit. The go-ahead solo home run all the way on the left field on the line drive. Teammates dapping him up. He's feeling good about himself. And just look at this four-seamer. About thigh high. A little bit in on the plate. Just takes it right there into the first row of the crowd. Nice little souvenir there as we all have an 88% chance of winning this game. And we got to look to put some more runs up. But at this point in my mind, I'm thinking, all right, cool. We got our one-run lead. Let me go ahead and sit 
Jordan Hicks down. We had scheduled to put him in the game. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that, sit him down. We're going to bring in Lucas Sims. We're going to warm him up, schedule to put him in. He will get the ninth inning to go ahead and shut this door and put this game away for good as we look to go ahead and try to put on some more insurance. Now, a nice strikeout there by Archie Bradley to bounce back from the home line. Then Jonathan India takes his ball and bloops into the outfield just long enough in the air to be caught. And you got Jay Allen up next. Two outs, first pitch he sees. Very unlucky for him. Still not able to get those hits in, but he's just not finding the contact right now. Sometimes you find that with your hitters, though. Sometimes they're not able to make the contact happen. But Jesus Aguilar getting that home run to really put things away. And that since he leads 1-0, it's not only for the series, but it's for the game. Lucas Sims, 45 of 51 opportunities this year. Whip below one, ERA below two, 84 strikeouts and 60 innings of work. That strikeout per nine is stupid. I think it's like in the 12s or 13s. And we can use a couple of strikeouts here now. Austin Nola, they will have eight, nine, and one. Not what you want in your lineup in most cases. For our team, I wouldn't be that mad at it, but most teams, you do not want that one. You can have your three, four, and five up. And they will chop over to first base for the first out. Andrew's up next. He'll watch that four-seamer up high for ball number one. Lucas Sims stretching up the arms, trying to feel a little bit good here as he's in postseason play now. Swings and misses through the four-seamer. We've got the count back 2-1, trying to even it up here. And he will. He needs one more strike to go ahead and put Andrew away. Swings and misses through the four-seamer low. And they are down to their final out coming up to the plate now as it will all come down to C.J. Abrams. 0 for 7 in the series up to this point. 0 for 3. He's got the speed, though. If it is a slow roller, he could find his way on. And that's when things get tricky and out of hand as we look to go in and put him away. Fouls off the first pitch and watches the slurve call strike 2. And with an 0-2 count, what pitch does Sims go to? He goes right back to that slurve on the inside. It doesn't get to the inside. It gets to the outside. It's grounded over to Hernandez, who will underhand flip it over to Aguilar. And that'll be the ball game as we win 1-0 and take a series lead of 2-0. This is exactly what you want to do. You do not want to give up any games while you're at home. Don't let the road team sneak away with one because now we have to go to their park and we'll have a chance to go ahead and end things. We'll have two opportunities before we even have to come back home to end this series. Now, if we had gave them one, they would be going back to their home field, playing for a chance to eliminate us, but they're just playing for a chance to stay alive in San Diego. As Hunter Green gets the win there. Eight innings, only one hit this whole game. If we had just stayed strong against Luke Voigt, he would have been able to walk out with a perfect game because he didn't even give up any walks either. But 10 strikeouts looking good. He got his first win of the postseason. Sims gets the save. You see Devers is up there on Aguilar's back. It probably should be the other way around since he was the one to save the game. <laughs> but it is what it is, man. We go ahead and get out of here protecting home field and getting ready to set up a trip to San Diego. Warmer weather to try to make this series happen. Like I said, that one hit from Luke Voigt just ruined the possibility of a perfect game for us. And on our end, only five hits, so a lot of offers up and down the lineup. But thankful for Jesus Aguilar, he's able to put in that work. 10 strikeouts for Hunter Green, doing great on his end. Over 100 pitches of deep pitching. So really appreciative of what he was able to accomplish here today and making sure that we got this dub. So now it's going to go back into the regular menu, man, as we have gone through our first two games but so have a lot of other teams man and this is kind of quickly recap where we kind of left off for the video an 11 to nothing dominating victory both ways of home runs and just manufacturing runs with doubles triples singles um, walks and then a hard fought pitching duel that almost saw a perfect game from us and hunter green the rookie but we walk away with a one to nothing victory now we've got our games on the road to deal with with the padres and if you look at the playoff tree here the Phillies are up 2-0 over Atlanta. The Mariners still not won, but both games on the road against the Yankees. And the White Sox managed to go ahead and steal one in LA as well to go 1-1 in that series. So this playoff tree is shaking out pretty interesting. Will the Yankees get swept? That would be pretty interesting because the Mariners will be going back home with the chance to sweep that series. So it's amazing what they're about to do. And we do a quick little lineup check here, looking at some of the guys' averages and home runs. As we play through the first two games, a lot of goods coming from here. Doug Granger, only one hit in seven at bats. Unfortunately, Bobby Order has been underproducing. Mike Moustakis, Jay Allen. Even Tyler Stevenson's underperforming what we're used to, but 286 is still okay. But if those guys don't pick up, Granger, Moustakis, and Allen, Rosario, Robles, and Chirac can play those positions. So don't tell me I'm going to have to go ahead and make those switches 
and put those guys in. But I'm just thankful we got a bench that is actually that good and I'm okay with bringing those guys in. We got speed over there. We got contact. We got fielding ability. So I'm really proud of what the bench looks like. The pitcher rotation, you already know, there's only been three pitchers that have come into these ball games. I mean, we almost had two complete games from our starters and we just had our closer come in and get one. So really proud of what this team has been able to do. Next time out, we will be watching for elimination game. It'll be game three. And if they happen to win that and force a game four, then it will be game four as well. And if they happen to win both of those, we go to a game five. That'll be in its own separate video. So expect that one to come out. This is dropping Saturday. Expect this to drop Wednesday. And then if it were game five, expect that Saturday or the next round for the NLCS. So hope to see you guys in the next video, man. Leave a like, comment, subscribe on your way out the video. Let me know what you guys are thinking of the series and if you guys are excited. Also, let me know if you guys are excited for MLB 23, the show. And if you want me to hop on there, I already have a team in mind that I would like to rebuild on that one. Of course, the file save thing works. I don't know. If we're able to win the World Series, this series, I mean, my job here would be done. But let me know what you guys feel. Should I just go ahead and when the new game drops, start that other series or keep going with this one? What are you guys feeling? Please let me know your comments and feelings down below. I'll ask again in the next video, probably at the beginning, just in case people that watched didn't make it this far. But I'll catch you guys in the next video, man. It's me, boy, SGG, aka Smooth Got Game, aka The King of Games, and aka GM Smooth. And I'm signing out for the day, man, as we are looking and knocking on the door for our very first NLCS. Let's get it.